microgreens are a um, either a baby herb or vegetable. Um, so the seed is planted and then they have about one to three weeks of growth and then they're harvested. Um, so they are a, uh, they're a super food. They're up to 40 times more nutritious by volume than their adult counterparts. Ooh. So for example, micro broccoli up to 40 X, uh, the amount of vitamins that an actual head of broccoli would contain by volume. Welcome to Rochester Business Connections, powered by Balbert Marketing, LLC, where I get the chance to chat with Rochester, New York's very best business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. I am your host, Ben Albert. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, we don't do advertisements. My fee for this show is simple. If you gain value from the episode, personally share with a friend and explain your favorite part. Let's get started. I am here with Brandon Rezkowski. Brandon, what's up? How are you today? Doing wonderful, Ben. Thanks for having me, buddy. I'm excited, man. I mean, before this, we're talking football. We're talking pretty much everything, entrepreneurship. Um, Because you are an entrepreneur, you're the owner of Rock City Greens. Um, You've tackled so many endeavors in your ultimately working full-time, always an entrepreneur on the side, um, Inovia Labs, Red Pin, Safety Kings. And now, to my understanding, you're double, if not triple downing on Rock City Greens. Let's uh, let's give a quick introduction to exactly what Rock City Greens is. I know I love it, but the audience, if they haven't heard of you yet, um, I'm sure they're curious. So what is Rock City Greens, man? Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Um, so Rock City Greens... It, and it's and it's pretty simple right now. Uh, we are a boutique small batch microgreen farm um, right out of Webster, so we, we service the greater Rochester area. Um, and and right now we key in on restaurant business, so we're we're growing um, re- uh, microgreens for some of the restaurants you probably eat at in the in the area. Um, eventually we will, uh, expand into a subscription model. That's, that's probably, uh, next over the next couple weeks, um, you know, and, and, and test marketing that in a couple different suburbs and then eventually, uh, full scaling it all over Rochester. Um, so microgreens, you know, for those that don't know what the product is, microgreens are a, um, either a baby herb or vegetable. Um, so the seed is planted and then they have about one to three weeks of growth and then they're harvested. Um, So they are a, uh, they're a super food. They're up to 40 times more nutritious by volume than their adult counterparts. So for example, micro broccoli up to 40 X the amount of vitamins that an actual head of broccoli would contain by volume. Um, So they're, they're an incredible product. They're amazing on, on, um, you know, pretty much any garnish, uh, salads, wraps, pastas, um, and they're just, they're, they're incredible for health. They're high in flavor. Um, and they're a very trendy product at the moment. High in fla- flavor, good for health, good for decoration on fancy dishes. Uh, I know that from the Instagram account. Let, let's shout it out right now, just cause your Instagram's like food porn. It's great. Well, what, what is the, the Instagram? Yeah, so the Instagram handle is uh, www.instagram.com slash rockcitygreens. So that is R-O-C City Greens, all one word. If you're from Rochester, I'm sure you can figure it out. So Rock City Greens. And what are some of the restaurants that currently utilize your products, utilize your microgreens? Yeah, absolutely. So so we have a... Uh, a handful of restaurants actually that, that buy from, from us on a, on a regular basis. Um, pub Two Thirty Five, the cobblestone on main, uh, Jojo's bistro and wine bar. Um, you know, the bodega on park, um, the hideaway on park. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a bunch of them really Nino's in the city. And actually Nino's has a couple locations. So he uses my micro cilantro. Mm. Um, at all of his locations. So the, the food truck and then the one in Monroe Ave and in Canandaigua. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a bunch more that are, that are onboarding as we speak. So, you know, there's, there's others that I'm blanking on at the moment, but yeah, that's a, that's a good, you know, a good, um, you know, subset of, of who we deal with. 
Yeah, it's a good introduction. So we're going to see more and more microgreens in Rochester. Um, where? What if I want them myself? Can I buy them personally or is it just for like restaurants or businesses? Yeah, you, you, you could buy them. Um, so plans are in the near future to, to, you know, do a couple of pop-up booths, um, essentially, you know, to try to pave the way for the subscription model, um, which should be, should be ready any week now to do, um, I've got a couple more racks set up that are that are basically going to be earmarked for this for the uh, retail customer. Um, so obviously, you know, restaurants were the were the start of the focus, but ultimately, uh, I think that that you know, non restaurants, people who eat at home, they need to eat healthy as well, and they want to eat good food. They want to they want to have access to the same ingredients that all the restaurants have. So, um, yeah. It's good. I I know I know you're thinking big, and you already have like an idea of your where you're going with things. Because I've I've talked to you numerous times, and I know you have that big thinking, entrepreneur ambition. Um, and you're gonna have to tell the story because I forget some of it because I've never been there. But you were talking to me about Epcot theme park, um, and so. Why don't you just tell the audience what you told me when we first, you know, talked about Rock City, about Epcot theme park and what you'd like to do in Rochester to kind of simulate and, um, you know, do something similar to that? Yeah, 100 percent. So for those who have gone, I I don't know if there's there's some Disney fans out there, but. There's probably a lot of Disney fans (laughs) out there, right? I I would think so. Right. It's uh, (laughs) a. What, the happiest place on earth, right? So, I mean, I've, I'm sure there's, you know, everybody who's ever had the um, the good fortune to go down there and experience it. Um, you know, I took my family a couple years ago uh, for a family vacation. It was a little after my daughter was born. Um, and, and so we went to Epcot Center and there is a ride there. It's called Living with the Land. And for those that know it, it it's, a, it's an awesome ride. For those that don't, you actually uh, you sit on a boat and you go through this presentation on, you know, how we live with the environment, uh, you know, where our food is coming from, you know, and, and, and some of the challenges that have been faced uh, to provide our growing population with food. And then you come out and you're, you're going through this massive greenhouse and literally any type of, of produce, uh, fruit or vegetable that you can think of is probably growing in that greenhouse. Um, so, you know, you look to your left, there's like a cucumber trellis, you look to your right, there's a guava tree, or, you know, you look, you look down the road, there's, you know, there's, there's greens, or there's, you know, pumpkins, they, they pretty much have everything growing in there. And then you get a little further in the exhibit, and they show kind of some modern ag approaches. So the, you know, the aquaponics, the, 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 uh, the layered, um, you know, runoff water where the, where there's fish and greens and, and, and lettuce growing in harmony with each other. They, they show some aeroponic stuff where the, where the roots are just kind of hanging out there in the air. Um, they, they, you then go through some fish farming. So they've literally got tanks of fish that they're farming, um, shrimp, lobsters. It's, it's just an amazing exhibit. And I'm like, man, this is mind blowing. Um, how do I bring this back to Rochester? <laughs> and, and then ultimately that that's what kind of spurred me to, to start up rock city greens. Cause you know, with, with a relatively small space, uh, harnessing vertical farming, indoor farming, year round growing, um, to provide healthful, nutritious food, um, that's grown locally here year round. Um, it's just so much better for the environment. Um, you know, lowers our carbon footprint, it's it's a better, higher quality product than what you're going to get at these big distributors. It's not getting wholesaled, you know, stored in in large scale, uh, you know, cold storage facilities. So I mean, learning about all this stuff to me was just mind blowing, and I just had to bring it back here to Rochester. So, you know, right now the the, the microgreens, like I said, it's it's the start, mm-hmm. um, with the main goal being to bring, you know, what I saw down in Orlando up here to Rochester. I love it. Uh, everything, Disneyland, the the happiest place in Rochester. <laughs> I would love that. You know, I and, and the cool thing is, is um, you know, as 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 a kid, you know, I never really gave any thought to 
you know, what am I eating? Right. Like, where is it coming from? Who's growing it? You know, and, and it's just an incredible, um, it's just an incredible way to think about it. <clears throat> I've even seen some documentaries um, and, and maybe you've even seen some of the same things, but um, Zach Efron and Darren Olean teamed up to produce a documentary series on Netflix. And they talk a lot about food and where it's coming from and, and how it's done and, and sustainability and, you know, how to live with the land and harness, um, you know, all the natural resources that are available to us and preserving that. Yeah. So sustainability is, have, do you have a background in conservation sustainability? Has it always been important to you or is this like a new passion project? Like what a lot of people, they hear healthy, they hear local, they hear 20 X, the amount 30 X, the amount of vitamins as a typical broccoli, they're on it for the health kick, but you're saying that this is more conservationally sound, more sustainable. Do you have a background in sustainability? What what got you so passionate about this specific topic? Yeah, so for me, it, it, it's been a journey, right? Um, but yeah, I've I've I was a Boy Scout, I was an Eagle Scout growing up, so you know I think there's there's part of that that's that's been a piece. Um, I went to college, my degrees in biology. So that's another piece, right? So all these things have kind of positioned me um, to be that way. And then I spent 10 years uh, as an environmental uh, health and safety manager. Um, and, and that's been with a couple different companies. Um, started out in the alternative energy field and then uh, moved into food manufacturing, um, bringing environmental health and safety sustainability there. Um, and, and also... Um, you know, metal fabrication, automotive, things like that. So, so yeah, I have 10 years uh, on the EHS side of things. Um, so between the, you know, between all those things, yes, it's, it's, it's kind of all culminated to, to me to put out this product. I love it. And, and ultimately it's a great product that soon we're going to have a subscription model. It's going to be in households all across Rochester. I want to build a little interest in that. Um, so we have people asking you for the subscription and to build interest. I mean, what better way to do it than talk about food and get everybody a little bit hungry. So oh, absolutely. I'm wondering like, what are some of your core microgreens? Obviously you're going to expand um, your product line as you go, but what are some of the core greens and what do people do with them? I mean, am I just putting broccoli on? I mean, you tell me I'm a terrible cook. I know how to use a crock pot cause I just mix things together, but let's say I was at a local restaurant or trying to actually build the plate myself. What, what greens would I use? What do I pair them with? Or what's the usage of them? Yeah. So the cool thing about microgreens and, uh, you know, and, and I'll say this little caveat too. A lot of restaurants have offered microgreens, and I've even had recent customers of mine say, "Hey, I was really excited to try these." And then I went to a restaurant, and I tried the microgreens, and they just really didn't taste like anything. Hmm. You know, and then and then so I'm like, "Let's listen. Try some of my microgreens. These are going <laughs> right. to be different." They tried mine, and they were blown away by the flavor, um, which was which was super validating to see that. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't just do lettuce, right? Like lettuce is boring, right? Like, I mean, okay, you know, don't get me wrong. There's there's a great value to lettuces like salads, but like, I mean, if you're growing micro iceberg, there's like nothing to it, right? And so to start, I say some of the, some of the more popular ones that I do, uh, one is a purple radish microgreen. Uh, and, and they're actually, they're, they're absolutely beautiful to see. It's a, it's a green and purple mix. Um, mm. they're just, they're super eye appealing and they've got like a spicy bite to them. Um, so they've got that little kick to them, just like a radish would have. Yeah. Right. So if you think about eating a full radish, you're going to get that same flavor in the microgreen. Um, but it's going to look a little different, obviously being a green instead of a, you know, an actual radish. Um, but yeah, you get that nice spicy bite to them and, and they're just, they're absolutely just beautiful. Um, another, another, um, in fact, you can actually look, if you look at Jojo's Instagram page, um, they did a special last week with them. Uh, and it was like a, a braised beef short rib and they had, um, some of the spicy radish on top of it. It just, they made it look really beautiful. Mm. They did a great job with it. Um, 
you know, so, so that's one product. Um, micro leaks are a huge, a huge, uh, seller for me. Um, people absolutely love the oniony flavor. Um, so, you know, you can pretty much use it wherever you could, you know, add onion to a dish. Right. Um, you know, and, and again too, um, so the greens, you're not really going to want to cook with them per se. Like you're not, you're not baking microgreens in an oven. You know, they're usually like an after, they're an after placement or they're in a cold preparation um, as kind of like a, like a sprinkle over or um, like fold it in. So like I've seen people fold them into an omelet mm. after it's been cooked. Okay. I've seen yeah. people, um, some, some customers have built little nests on top of a pasta dish with like the micro leak. Um, and it's just, you know, it adds a great flavor, a great pop, and then a nice contrast in color to the dish. So, you know, even beyond the nutrition, I mean, they just, they taste great and they look awesome. Yeah. It's nutritious. It tastes great. It looks awesome. Are they affordable? I mean, let's say I wanted to garnish my meal with a little bit of microgreens. Is it going to add $20 to my, my entree or are they affordable as well? They, they actually are very affordable. And, and if, if you're paying twenty dollars for a uh, for a handful of microgreens, you're getting ripped off. So, <laughs> okay. no, I mean, uh, yeah. really, even to a restaurant, it only costs them pennies per dish. Really, to add some microgreens to it, it's it's pretty cheap. Pennies um, per dish, wow. Yeah, it's it's really it's not much. I mean, because you think about it, I I sell them by the clamshell. It's like a you know like one of those little plastic takeout containers that you get at when you go out to eat. You know, I'll fill a container with that. It'd be you know, just if I had to throw out a weight, probably like an ounce of product in there. Um, and that could go for like five bucks, you know, so it's nothing crazy. Um, you know, you, you get a lot of servings out of, you know, a container um, for the $5. I mean, you, and a little goes a long way. You don't need to eat a ton of them. Um, you know, um, the pea shoots, I just posted today on Instagram about the pea shoots. Okay. Um you know, in Asian Asian cuisine, you can stir fry those. They taste amazing with some garlic, some butter, some oil. Sorry, not butter, oil. Um, you know, salt and pepper, and you know, just hot wok. Stir fry them up, and they're awesome. What, what's a pea shoot? So uh, a pea shoot or a pea tendril. Um, it's basically, a, you know, I'll plant a little pea seed. After about a week or two of growth, you'll have. It's literally the shoot of a pea, and you harvest it right there, and and you got a product. Wow! So so, you have is this your home office that you like? What's what's the setup look like? What's the day to day look like? You're, you've got a mastermind setup in, in the home office, or do you tell me a little bit how that works? Yeah. So so uh, I actually have a uh, a grow room. Uh, mm -hmm. built specifically for these micros, um, you know, and I grow them uh, in a vertical farm, right? So it's an urban vertical farm. So it's an indoor uh, year round grow setup uh, using multi-tiered racks, right? So, so I have racking that's about four or five racks high or about a, about a foot in between each, each uh, shelf. Um, I've got led lights, uh, a very specialized led light, that's, you know, a few of them per, you know, per tray. Um, you know, I've got uh, food grade plastic trays that I'm using soil and um, to grow indoors. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's hard to picture. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll lead people to go back to my Instagram account because mm -hmm. I've, I've shown some early iterations of the, of the grow setup. Um, if you look back through some of the photos, um, so if you're super curious to, to actually see it, the picture is probably a better description than I can ever, uh, ever give you, uh, verbalizing it. Yeah. They say picture speaks a thousand words and I, I'm an idiot who doesn't know much about this kind of growing. So for people that do, they're like always asking the dumbest questions, but you, you use the term vertical farm. What for, you know, a layman's person like me, what, what is a vertical farm? Right. So, um, you know, one of the challenges uh, with growing in a small space is that, you know, you don't have a lot of surface area, you know, so if I had, 
if I had trays of dirt, you know, strewn about a room on a table or something, I would only be able to grow a very small amount of product um, because I'm, I'm utilizing the vertical space using shelving. Um, you know, I, I can grow a whole lot more in a small space. Okay. So it's just stacking, it's stacking them on top of each other, basically. Yeah. So I'm using, um, you know, multi-tiered racks mm. uh, to basically utilize the space that I do have and, uh, and keep it um, one affordable and two environmentally friendly. Now I want to, I want to just nerd out about getting to know Brandon. I always like to talk about Rochester, let people get to know you personally because you are a business owner in the community. Um, I want to ask you your favorite restaurants, give you a second to think about it because first I want to say call to action for everybody. Here's the thing. Most people that listen to the show aren't restaurant owners, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a list. I think we all should sort of brainstorm of our favorite restaurants that we think would be a great place to house these microgreens, vegan restaurants, fancy restaurants, Nino's, which is like street Mexican food and incredible has them. So obviously Rochester's accepting them with open arms. So, you know, that's homework for everybody. What restaurant do we think should have microgreens? Um, but this is nothing to do with what restaurants have them or don't. Any favorite places to eat in Rochester, Western New York? Like, what, what do you love to do in terms of dining and socializing and fun things like that in the city? Yeah, so, um, you know, I have two kids. One, one is three, the other is seven months. <laughs> so getting out to eat has been a lot more challenging, uh, especially in the midst of a, of a global pandemic. Right. <laughs> um, you know, um, so we do a lot of when we do go, you know, when we go out to eat, we do a lot of takeout, um, you know, so getting it car side to go, bringing it back home just because, you know, for, for, for anybody with kids, uh, probably can appreciate it's, it's a whole lot easier to, to keep them at home. Um, you know, where you can, you know, have a high chair and a, you know, a, a nice setup, but, um, definitely, uh, definitely like to go to a bunch of the, a local places. Uh, I'm not big on chains. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I like to support local, local restaurants. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great ones out there. I mean, um, uh, you know, even close to me, I'm, I'm out in Webster. So, I mean, the cobblestone on Maine's great. Pub 235 is awesome. Um, love Barry's Irish pub. Um, you know, Jojo's wine bar is awesome. I mean, they have some great pizzas there and, and some other dishes. Uh, Chef Billy is phenomenal. He does some great work. Um, you know, uh, we I mentioned Nino's. Uh, yeah, got to be some of the best Mexican food in restaurant or in all of Rochester right now. Absolutely, uh, just phenomenal stuff. Um, you know, there's there's really so many. I could just I could just name them all off. I mean, Velvet Belly's incredible. Um, they're a customer of mine as well. Um, they, they just posted a dessert they, they made with my micro basil the other day. It was just hmm. phenomenal. Um, I, I believe it was a lemon panna cotta, um, with, with basil and, and, and fresh raspberry drizzle. It was just top notch. You know, they do some awesome stuff there. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a bunch of amazing restaurants. We're, we're really blessed. I'm with you, man. And I'm not against takeout Yeah, I was never Personally, I was never a huge sit down, you know, let's blow $200 on a bill. Not even that I don't have the money. I just never been a big sit down, fancy, waitress, all these questions. I like to get the takeout. The food tastes the same. I can take it home. I can watch the TV. I can, you know, have fun at home. I can read anything like that. So nothing against takeout. Um, Nino's is up there the other one that's up there for me is los gallos which is over in greece um and i mean i live like right next to it so i just had los gallos for for lunch today so i'm stuffed um but <laughs> love the local mexican love the local businesses and love that you're adding an element to these local businesses because most of them do want to buy local and support local and they're locally owned and they're family businesses and your microgreens is just another thing to attract customers and at the same time flavorful we said healthy we said good for you 
Um, dude, it's like a triple crown. You've got everything you need going for you, man. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's a pretty easy sell, honestly. I mean, because yeah. there's really no, there's really no reason not to eat them, right? It's like, well, no, I, you know, I want to be unhealthy and eat, you know, food that doesn't taste good, right? Like n- nobody says that, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, but it sounds um, like, for example, take the basil. You can even incorporate it into dessert. So even if you want to have dessert, you can still have the greens in your dessert, right? Yeah. You know, it's funny, too, because um, some of the customers that I'm getting into right now, um, I've even had some interest from places like Black Button Distillery, mm. um, and they do some some cocktail kits. And they're like, that, huh? some of these things would be awesome in cocktail kits and, and, you know, high end drinks and, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, we're going to be working a little bit more closely there. I mean, Roarbox is right next door. Chef Brian's awesome there. He's starting to play with my stuff. Um, you know, so we'll starting fall, once that fall menu rolls out, Rock City Greens will be at Roarbox. So that's, you Mm -hmm. know, another pretty cool place to be. Um, you know, so drinks, desserts, meals i mean you can you can use them everywhere i'm not i personally am not a fan but bloody mary's seems like perfect combination to put microgreens in your bloody mary <laughs> yeah yeah I, I mean you see breakfast, some of these breakfast of champions <laughs> yeah you see some of the bloody marys that have yeah. that, that are out there now and like they've got like an entire meal like in a you know like in a skewer on top of it like they've got you know all sorts of cool stuff in there like I don't know, like pickles and, and meats and stuff. And I mean, it's just uh, what a concept, right? What a time to be alive. Um, you know, uh, but the cool thing is, yeah, you could totally use like, you know, really anything, you know, micro, micro leaks would probably be great in like a high end Bloody Mary. I mean, give it that little onion kick, like really anything mm-hmm. could work in that. What, um, so this is a newer endeavor for you what are some of the struggles so a lot of the listeners are business owners but a lot of them are more in that salesperson role or um, they just like to listen to podcasts because they like to learn about local businesses and they're considering starting their own what what are some of the biggest struggles you know going full time and triple downing on this passion project which clearly there's a demand for it and clearly there's a ton of growth potential no pun intended but a ton of growth <laughs> potential um what kind of struggles should an entrepreneur look for when they're first getting started with a passion project like this yeah so you know to be honest uh, when i started this whole endeavor it was back in 2019 Um, so it was pre pandemic. So Mm -hmm. the model that I was going with, um, (laughs) you know, basically was a 100% restaurant business back in 20 and, and then the pandemic hit, you know, we got back from a little trip and it was just chaos. All the restaurants kind of started shutting down. Um, all of my customers just disappeared. So I had to put it on hold for a little bit and then I just reopened it a couple months ago. So obviously, you know, barring a massive pandemic, you know, um, that's, you know, I guess diversifying customer base is, is definitely a thing to, mm. to watch out for. Right. I mean, I never imagined that, that all the restaurants would pretty much be, be shutting down, you know, that was crazy. Um, you know, so, you know, th- there's, there's always, um, you know, being a small business, right. There's tons of hurdles. Um, but when you're the sole you're the sole owner proprietor. Um, you're doing everything. You're doing the sales. You're doing the marketing. You're doing the the R and D for new products. You're doing all the production. You're doing all the packaging. You're doing all the. And for me, it's the planting, the the harvesting, the watering. I mean, all these things take up time. Um, you know, obviously, getting it, getting your name out there is a huge a huge challenge, right? Like, um, being a relatively new brand. Um, and, and even for me, like, so my product isn't quite as well known even in, in mainstream yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, microgreens are really trendy. Like they're, they're well known in the, among the restaurant populace, but I mean, there is what 700,000 people in the greater Rochester area. I don't know how many of them actually know what a microgreen is. You know, um, they may see them in passing or when they order out to eat something nice at a restaurant, but. But other than that, maybe they're not even aware of what are the benefits. 
um, beyond just flavor and presentation, but like the nutritional element, maybe people don't even know. So educating the general populace is, is going to be another challenge there too. I think the nutritional education is a massive point because I know personally, you go a few years back, especially I, I didn't really know what microgreens were and what I'm thinking to myself because I'm thinking like five or more years ago, thinking to myself, like seeing these microgreens on dishes and thinking it was more for decoration or maybe it was not a good quality green. So it didn't have a ton of flavor. And I was like, not even sure if it's edible or if it's like, what, what's going on here. And to learn that they can be just chock full of flavor and chock full of nutrition it's almost like I have a whole new pair of eyeglasses where I'm looking and I see a microgreen and I'm like, ooh, that's where I want to go to first. Um, but again, that seems like it's more just a miseducation or just it's it's not as trendy as it will be yet. It's still – are there other people doing microgreens? Is it really much of a thing in Rochester or are you pretty much spearheading this movement? It, do you know if there's a lot of competitors or what have you found? So yeah, so there's a few. Um, there's a few. Uh, I, you know, there's um, you know, there's Bolton Farms out in Hilton. Um, they do the the pub. I think they do the farm market out in Brighton. Um, you know, and obviously they're they're far like on the other side of town from me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't I don't even know if they're necessarily like just focusing on that. They do a lot of hydroponic like other things right so they do a lot of like hydro lettuces and other things from what i understand um there's you know pretty much uh, a lot of the farm markets will have a small grower or two um you know so it's just a matter of of you know there's there's other growers right but i don't know how many of them are right here in rochester um you know and 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 the ones that are they're probably just focusing on their booth that's their only main way of distributing so if you happen to come across them at the at whatever market they're at, then you can get them. Other than that, you know, I don't I don't know what they're, you know, what else is there. So you're more going door to door. You're not just waiting for someone to walk up to you. You're like, I want to take these greens. I want to get them in every location I can. Yeah, and and for me too, it's like you know, getting them in restaurants, right? Because a lot of restaurants want them. Um, and, or they want some variety of microgreen, but maybe they're getting them from a large distributor. Um, I know that some of the larger distributors, they grow them, you know, they, they have growers out of Cleveland or wherever, but it's like one of the big reasons I got into this is because I feel like there needs to be a push for hyper local agriculture year round. Um, there's a huge tremendous amount of waste in trucking product from one side of the country to the next right? It's just a lot of trucking. It's a lot of fuel. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and honestly, you're not getting as fresh of a product. Um, all the restaurants that I grow for, I harvest the same day that it goes to them. Wow. So they're literally, they're literally getting a product that was harvested within hours. It's, it's it's a basically a farm to table concept. The farmiest to tableist I've seen. (laughs) Wow. Vertical farm to table. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It, yep. It, so it's, uh, you know, and the other thing too, that, that people, I guess, you know, they maybe they don't really appreciate, right? So big companies have big resources and most of the time, small companies, they don't have as many resources, um, you know, and, and you see these recalls, right? Like, oh, um, spinach got recalled or um, romaine lettuce got recalled you know, uh, food safety is a huge concern, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm actually HACCP certified because of my time that I spent. um, I was actually a manager over at the, one of the large uh, pasta companies um, in the, in the country, actually Barilla Pasta used to work for them. Um, So I actually got HACCP certified. So that's, um, it's a food safety certification. Um, so everything I do is 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 done with that in mind, right? So I, I sanitize everything using food grade hydrogen peroxide. Um, you know, I use I use food grade plastic trays when I'm when I'm growing. I follow organic growing practices. Um, it, you know, and all of that has to deal with keeping food uh, the quality high and the and the safety high. So that's a 
you know, another thing that I kind of wanted to put out there. Yeah. I mean, I look at some of these recalls and yeah, ha- it happens a lot in food. It happens a ton in drugs where thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars worth of units and food and drugs get recalled back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how many people did that end up on their table and end up in their mouth before that recall? And how many people could that have harmed? And when you're going farm to table, day of harvesting small batch, with great regulations and knowing exactly, you know, how to keep things safe and healthy. Worst case scenario, something obscure happens. It's a small batch. And you can just toss it out. It's not like you have to worry about a huge recall or harming or hurting people with anything unhealthy. It sounds like the way to go. It makes me wonder why everything just isn't, I'm sure it would be more expensive. It's harder to produce, but why isn't everything done that way why are trucks coming from california to new york i don't know if you have an answer for it but why why are we shipping everything what's the point why can't we just keep it local i'm assuming it's profit right Mm -hmm. it's profit and it's and it's scale right so there's a massive amount of people in the country um and you know unfortunately or unfortunately whatever however you want to look at it right um so Back when the population was booming, you know, throughout the history of our country, they had to had to come up with a way to feed everybody and keep it affordable for, you know, for for the masses, right? So, you know, they went with these large these large farms, right? Um, because they could, you know, just grow more, right? I mean, they it's just what it came down to. But even you know, the more you learn, it's like, well, you know, they've they've kind of opted for for seeds and things that were more resistant to blight and resistant to drought. Um, but in doing that, uh, unfortunately it sacrifices nutritional value, mm-hmm. right? So you even, I, and I think a study was done, you know, you buy a head of broccoli off of a supermarket shelf today. Um, it's, it's like 60% less nutritious than a broccoli head that you would have bought off the store back in 1930. Yikes. And that's yeah, for a number yeah. of reasons, right? Yeah, it's not just seed selection. It's it's the logistic concerns, right? The the um, you know the 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 harvest in mass and setting in cold storage to basically slow rot. You know, by the time it gets to your, by the time it gets to the supermarket, right, a, a large percentage of it is thrown right in the trash, and then you know it sits on shelves to be thrown more in the trash until a consumer buys it, hopefully eats it. And, you know, doesn't rot in their fridge, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a crazy concept to me. Um, we have the technology now to convert and go back to hyper-local ag mm-hmm. um, and have community-based farming. Um, it's just not really talked about as much because of probably big farms, right? Like they want to preserve profits, I'm assuming, you know. I don't, not, you know, not, not to get into any like theories out there. I don't, I don't know with certainty, but I have to, I have to imagine there's a dollar trail, um, you know, as to why things are done the way they are. Seems to be a commonality in most big industries <laughs> like farming. Um, all the better reason for the subscription model, man. Like, well, when can I start getting it delivered to my house? Do you need yeah, people to, uh, you need people to like sign up for interest? Like, how do you? where do we get, how do we get to that level where I'm getting it delivered to my house? I know that it's legit. I know that it's fresh. Pick the day of, how do we get to that level, man? Really? As, as soon as my website is done, I'll be accepting orders, uh, which hopefully should be done in the next week, maybe two weeks. Okay. Um, and and then I'll let me know know because I, I might just like delay the podcast for a little bit longer than we need to. If, if you think we can get it out, um, we can make it available by the time it comes out Sure, sure. for whatever reason, this is out and it's not available yet. You really want to comment. You want to DM me. You want to DM Brandon, um, follow him on LinkedIn, email him, um, and just let us know that there's a demand for this and you're on the list because in a perfect world, you just sign me up right now, man. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, in fact, next time we meet up for, you know, for lunch or whatever, I'll, I'll bring you some samples. That way you can try them and figure out what you like the most. Got it. So yeah, it's, it's going to be based on preferences. So you're going to have lots of options and based on what I like the most, I just have it delivered right to my doorstep. Absolutely. Yeah. So I currently grow about probably like 10 varieties or so. Mm -hmm. Um, that list will continue to expand as the subscriptions expand, right? Um, I want to keep it fun. I want to keep rotational stuff going, right? Um, do some cool stuff around different holidays, um, you know, uh, offer new varieties all the time. You know, there's there's some cool stuff out there. I mean, there's there's a lot of awesome varieties of produce. And pretty much any vegetable or herb you can think of, there's a micro version. Mm. Interesting. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start nerding out on this. I'm really gonna start nerding out because I mean you had me at thirty times the nutrition. Um, just I'd be tossing them on soup all day personally. You totally can. In fact, um, I want to say somebody's already done it at one of my restaurant customers. Like they made like a I think they made like a potato leek soup, mm. and then they garnished with micro leek on the top, and it just kind of like leekception, right? Yeah. Leak <laughs> yeah. On leak. <laughs> leak on leak action. That's right. I I want to get extra fun, lighthearted, the rapid fire round. And I've been joking about this by now. People already know, but it, it's a mix of family feud where it's the 30 second round at the end where you've got to give the best answer. However, it's more like whose line is it anyway that the points don't matter and they're completely subjective to you. So I'm going to ask either or fill in the blank questions just to get to know Brandon a little bit better. Sound good? Perfect. Awesome. Coffee or tea? Espresso. A beer or a wine? Uh, definitely beer. A morning person or a night owl? I'm a morning person these days. Do you have a favorite season? Fall. Um, do you have a favorite podcast? Uh, obviously, your podcast that I'm on right now is my <laughs> now favorite. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> do you have a favorite podcast episode? Oh, man, that's that's hard to lock down, man. I mean, you've had some really great guests. Dude, you're supposed to say this one. I was giving well, I was, I was I mean, obviously I'm, I find myself very interesting. Um, but but I loved when you had Marshall on. That was a good one. Yeah, you know, Marshall's great. I, I just he just had a birthday the other day. He's a he's a great guy. Yeah. Yesterday. Um, happy, happy birthday again, Marshall. <laughs> this well, this is coming out farther out. But Marshall, if you're listening we should actually just send him this episode every every year for his birthday, just as a reminder. <laughs> I'm sure he'd appreciate that. That's the gift that keeps on giving, right? Yes. So so three part question. Favorite breakfast, favorite entree, favorite dessert. Okay. Favorite breakfast. Um I'm gonna go with a crab cake eggs benedict. Um, a little bit of a uh, little bit of traditional niche modern approach with a little seafood thrown in. Yeah. Um, favorite entree. Um, I'm a sucker for a really good chicken French, you know, um, mm. you know, and, and obviously, uh, got a shout out to a great garbage plate too. being, uh, <laughs> being here in Rochester. I, I love garbage plates. Um, you, you know, really, and then you really could make garbage plates healthy with microgreens. You could high, high calorie, but we could still make it high nutrition. You could, and you can even elevate a garbage plate. Um, you know, I think somebody's done it already, and they could even use a microgreen for it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously, you put onions. You know, you could put the micro leaks on instead. Yes. You know? um, and then I don't know desserts. Um, I'm a big cheesecake guy. I love cheesecake. Cheesecake Factory or Cheesy Eddie's. Cheesy Eddie's, man. Yeah. Cheesecake yeah. Factory got me into cheesecake. And then I realized Cheesy Eddie's was around and then started going there. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny because growing up, my family's a uh, big Polish. Uh, my dad's side is a big Polish family. So, um, you know, uh, cheese, 
cheesecake was always big in our household. They make it a little different than like New York style, but uh, but it's definitely uh, definitely up there for me. I'll have to try some, man. Well, what else do I have for you? I ultimately, again, people show interest in the subscription model. It sounds like it's going to be here very, very soon. Um, shout out the Instagram and any other ways to get in touch with you, Brandon. Yeah, absolutely. So Facebook, Instagram, both are, are you know, handles Rock City Greens. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. I have a Rock City Greens LinkedIn page. Um, you know, so that so any of those ways are really good. Um, you know, my website will be changing, but you can always message me on my website as well. It's awesome. It, it, as always, it'll be in the so show notes. I like to put the LinkedIn in the show notes so people can connect one on one. The Instagram, the website um, will be in the show notes, but that sounds like that'll be changing. And I guess the last thing that's been on my mind is, so someone like me doesn't know much about this stuff. I'm going to go to the Instagram because it's food porn to watch all these, you know, different ways to design and, and use these microgreens. But if I'm looking to like learn more and just understand the nutrition, is there a book or a podcast or a YouTube or where should I, how do I learn a little bit more about this stuff? How do I get more excited and better understand the value of microgreens. Where did you learn or what, what would you suggest for a listener? Yeah. So, so there's a couple of cool, um, you know, there's a couple of cool YouTube stars out there too. Uh, one of which was Curtis stone. He kind of got me into the, the urban farm movement. Um, cool guy out of Canada does some really fun stuff. Um, and not necessarily like microgreen specific, but if you follow Darren Olean, uh, either on Instagram or, or, you know, look him up on Google. He does a lot of, a lot of fun stuff about eating, um, in season, eating, you know, uh, nutritious, you know, plant-based stuff. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm not like, I'm not a strict pure vegan or anything like that, but, um, but I definitely, you know, think that we as Americans need to, to incorporate more plant matter into our diets because we're, we're kind of meat centric. A lot of us, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and obviously you don't get a complete nutrition that way. Um, the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of cool, cool stuff to learn out there. Um, I don't, I don't know of a book per se on microgreens, like specifically. Um, but I've, you know, I've done a lot of, of, of fishing on YouTube and, you know, learning, learning through videos there. Um, you know, reading, reading information that way. Um, mm -hmm. and I know there are some, you know, there's some people who have a business that they teach you how to grow microgreens. Um, so you can check out some people like that too. Yeah. There's always, I'm going to basically click rewind a couple of times, write down those names, go on YouTube university, learn because microgreens, it, it is trending, but this is a new thing, um, which is a kick-ass thing to kind of spearhead and jump on now because with the consciousness of health and the fact that we probably eat too much meat, we probably don't farm properly. I think this will be huge in the next 10, 20, 30 years. So everyone should jump on board now. And Brandon, man, again, your info is in the show notes. I appreciate you coming on and we're going to have to follow up once we get even more momentum on this project, man, do a part two once the momentum's through the roof, brother. 100% man. Hopefully that's soon. Yeah. It, <laughs> well, it, I want it to be as soon as possible because I want to see you successful and uh, I'll be your first subscriber. So sign me up. Sign, give me, sign me up for the sampler platter because I got to figure out what I like, but, but I'm going to try them all. 100% <laughs> man. 100%. Well, hey, dude, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for listening to Rochester Business Connections. Don't forget to share this, rate, and comment on your favorite platform. You can also email me, ben at balbertmarketing.com. Let's connect soon. Until then, keep thriving, everyone.